So we are going to be looking today at the Minoans. Um, we're not going to be looking at the development of the Minoans. We're not going to be looking at the precise end of the Minoans. And in so much, we're going to be looking at what led to the fall of the Minoan civilization. Um, I started the first one of these I did on Monday. And the biggest problem was, was juggling up the data for Thera, um, which was the volcano, and some tree ring uh, dendrochronology evidence um, and the sites and saying, look, you know, this is what led to the end of the Minoan civilization, which would be the title of fall of the Minoan civilization. So I sort of tweaked it a little bit. Um, and what we're going to do today is, is looking at um, the events that um, led to the Minoans um, falling out of history in a way. So what we've got is it's, it's a date that's been long thought of, the date of 1645 BC is the date. Now some archaeologists and historians, not all, uh, believe um, was the date that Thera, Thera, Mount Thera exploded on the island of Santorini. Santorini is equally called Thera as well. Now, um, the, that date itself, um, to some marks the end of the Minoan world. But from my reading and from what I know from the other research I've done over the years, it was not, it was not the end of the Minoan civilization that moment. Um, but it was a, quite a traumatic um, cataclysm um, that caused uh, to be referred to and written down um, and affected many of the civilizations. We can say that the eruption of Thera could be heard anywhere on the planet. It was four times um, larger than um, Krakatawa um, that went up in 1886, Krakatawa. The, the um, rumblings of Krakatawa were actually heard in London. But this event itself, the, 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 um, the eruption um, from the caldera of Thera was four times greater than Krakatawa. So you can imagine this is quite a big event. And it's thought that it was the end of one of the major um, Chinese dynasties. It also affected um, the Egyptian world. Um, it, it's something that um, needs to be looked at. And, I've, and today, uh, when, I, when, I, when I undertook the lecture today in Bridgend, I made a lot of the importance of this date. Not from a, not from a historical point of view, but from an archeological point of view. The, the point being, is data. Why is a certain date in history so important? And that's what I've been discussing all week. Um, there's one date in history that's important to all of us at school. It's still important today and it's still important when we look at our calendar. It's the, it's the date 2020. It's the date that we were born. It's the date that our parents were born. It's the date the First World War started. All those dates relate to one event, the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, in December, um, in the year 1 BC, uh, led to 1st of January, um, naught AD. So the birth of Jesus Christ is, is a very important date. However, um, with all respect, Anne, and I know your religious beliefs, that um, we don't really know when G Jesus Christ was actually born. I do believe he was born, but uh, we don't exactly know when. <laughs> However, the point is the eruption of Thera is more important than that date. It is in fact so important that if we are able to learn the date Thera went up, the precise moment, it would help us understand uh, the demise of the upland areas of Britain, um, the cataclysms that were occurring in North America, the disaster effects this, uh, this volcanic uh, event had in Africa, Asia, and so on. This is one of the most important events in history. This is more important than the birth of Jesus Christ. Now the scientists have been trying to work this out and you can gain overnight. This is not just about at the beginning and the end of the Minoan civilization. This is the, the moment of time, a time sign, an indication. Um, this, this, is, this is an event that would have been known about by the Native Americans of North America. You know, this, this, is, this is so important. You know, um, you know, it's more in, this, this one single event is more important than, the, than all the events of the First World War. 
um, because of the, of, of the wide range and effects that this event had on the climate, humanity, animals, everything, flora, fauna, you name it. Um, so this is not, this is, as I said at the beginning, this is not just about the Minoans today. So one word we're going to come up with today is a word that you may never have come across. Um, it's, it's, known, it's known as the wiggle, wiggle matching. To be honest with you, I didn't have the foggiest what that meant on Monday, so I had to dig into it. What wiggle matching is, as a metaphor, is to try and work out the day Anne got married, what exactly happened there, what year it was, what the landscape was like, um, getting all the information together. Anne doesn't know the day she was born, but what we're going to do, uh, married, but she doesn't know the day she was born. So what you do with wiggle matching is you look at all the evidence and it gives you an idea when Anne was born. It gives you an idea when Anne was married. And eventually we'll come to the precise moment when Anne was married and when she was born by wiggling the information. And this is exactly what we archaeologists are intending to do with the eruption of Thera. Um, so it's based on all the evidence, all the information, all the science to actually give us the precise moment when an event happened in history. And a, a similar event that happened in history um, is the eruption of Vesuvius. Now, we know that the eruption of Vesuvius occurred on the 24th of August in the year AD 79 at 12 o'clock. That date is an important date, but it's not as important as this date. And the reason why it's not, it's not as important as this date, because in AD 79, Roman civilization continued. The Roman Empire continued. Life continued but life did not continue the same way after AD 79. This is a far more important event than this modern day pandemic, which has only affected humanity. Well, in fact, it's had a good effect on the environment, but that's another lecture altogether. So when we talk about Thera, we link in Crete. And when we talk about Crete, we link in the Minoans. And when we talk about the eruption of Thera, we link in the world. That's what we're talking about. So, um, is, is it important for me to say that we, we know the start of the um, end of the Minoan civilization and the end of the Minoan civilization? Well, the answer is, um, from what I know, the Minoan world did not completely collapse in a moment. And secondly, the Minoan did continue on as a people. Um, their pottery um, is still being used in trade and produced hundreds and hundreds of years of after the Minoan world has apparently have collapsed, as a, apparently wiped out by the Mycenaeans. Yeah, uh, we will mention the Mycenaeans. The Mycenaeans didn't destroy um, the Minoan world. Um, they absorbed the Minoan world, but you can argue that till the cows come home. Let's, let's just get fixed with what we're doing. The event traditionally associated with the fall of the Minoans was the eruption of a nearby volcano island, Mount Thera. This was one of the largest um, volcanic eruptions in Earth's history. Now that is quite, quite an amazing thing to say, actually. Um, when we talk about Earth's history, I would say over the past 65 million years. Um, in 2006, scientists estimated that what they knew before 2006, after they, the volcanologists and everybody got involved, they found out that the eruption of um, Thera was four times larger than they ever dreamt. So in, in, in other words, um, this is like um, coming home to your wife and saying, well, I've lost... Um, I've lost a hundred pounds on the um, in gambling, and, and when in fact you had lost a thousand pounds in gambling. The, uh, losing a hundred pounds in gambling isn't that much, but losing a thousand pounds is a lot of money. There's me. I put a thousand pounds on an England in England game once, so I know the impact of putting uh, money into gambling. But the fact of the matter is, what I'm trying to say is that then people start to reassess, not just the effect on the Minoans after 2006, but the effect on all of us. Um, one, one few other little weird things about um, this thing is that we've got, we've got a wonderful site known as Akrotiri, which is on the island of Santorini, the island that holds Mount Thera. Uh, and that site of Akrotiri, after they excavated it in 1967, they found none to very little evidence of, of human bones on the site, which means that the people of Akrotiri were forewarned. They knew Thera was going to um, erupt. 
Now that is far more than um, the Romans did with Pompeii. When the Romans heard the rumblings that morning at eight o'clock, they did. They stayed there and tens of thousands of people died. Plantus, um, Stabe, Heraclanium, Pompeii and so on. They, 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 they died. They, they lived there and died. But the, the people at Aquitiri associated with this eruption, if we keep to it with that date, 1,645, that date's going to come and go over the next few years. It might be right or wrong, but that's the date that the archaeologists are slowly getting to from the ice core analysis and all the other um, science that we've got behind it. People evacuated from Santorini. They knew this was going to happen in exactly the same way as those knew the events were going to happen at Mount St. Helens when that went up in 1988 pretty sure it was 1988 that's what i've been saying all week but when mount st helens went up in north america they evacuated they evacuated the people of that area um except for one or two people stayed on thinking it wasn't going to kill them and it did but people were um evacuated volcanologists knew this was going to happen the the minoan volcanologists knew this was going to happen the romans did couldn't be bothered in ad 79 thousands of people died one thing is, is that it's, it's clear now that history and archaeology is relevant, is very relevant to learn from the past. To learn from the past is not to repeat its mistakes. Um, but what have we done as human beings? We keep making those mistakes over and over again. Um, so... Crete, Palace, Knossos, some of you have not been there. This, um, the eruption of um, Mount Thera. Now, um, before anyone says it, Thera is associated with the legends of Atlantis. Um, I'm one of those um, that believes that when Plato is writing about Atlantis, he's referring to the eruption of Santorini. That's what he's talking about, or one of the eruptions of Santorini, because that Santorini um a thera has erupted more than once in history like all volcanoes vesuvius have erupted many times in history so has mount saint helens so has etna all these things have erupted more than once um but um when when plato is describing the island and the eruption of this volcano he describes the fact that there's a temple on the top of it okay yeah it sounds a bit far-fetched but when you actually think about it it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. Um, there's a site in Greece known as Delphi. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever been to Delphi, but it, fair enough, I, I will tell you. At Delphi, they've got, um, there's gases, natural sulfuric um, gases, and other gases come from fissures in the rock. So you can imagine um, over 2,300 years ago, the oracle at Delphi, somebody go into the oracle at Delphi, and the oracle's just sat there, and somebody comes in and they say, oh, oh I'm feeling a bit, a bit lightheaded, yeah? And the oracle's telling them things. And the oracle's saying, well, when you, when you walk out of here, you're going to drop dead. Person drops dead. Job done. Um, Delphi, Delphi is set at um, a, a volcanic crossroads, a volcanic fissure. And you can imagine having a temple directly on top of this. I'm not saying directly on top of the vent, but then again, vents... Uh, sometimes sealed up on top of one of the vents so you can imagine having a temple there and you've got people going up to the temple having um having a soothsayer telling them what's going to happen in their lives and and they say right if you if you hear a rumble um your wife will die next week and suddenly there's a rumble in the ground strangely enough by the time they get home they probably forgot what the what the oracle said but the fact of the matter is it's very likely that there was a temple on top of this volcano um even if there wasn't there's some there's some archaeological information to tell you quite clearly that this was the site of atlantis the minoans were very advanced we're not talking about spacecraft which dell dell um uh, believes in and all these other things that go bump in the light but we are talking about a highly advanced civilization dell there's nothing wrong with a um, with an alien craft being on top of this um, volcanic vent, is there? Um, no. I've I've got no problems with it. So, so, so the thing is, when when we when we look at something like this, we, we think you know fact, fiction, fantasy. What's going on? So what we've got this wonderful map in front of us now, 
Um, and what we've got, we've got Santorini at the heart of the Minoan world. We've got Egypt. Yeah, fair enough, but not fair enough at all. So go a bit further into Egypt. That's 500 miles away from um, Thera. Rhodes itself, 130 odd miles away. Crete, 70 odd miles away. Mainland Greece, 140 miles away, rounding these up. But the point is, is that when you get an idea of distances, this is not a small world, right? Now, when you talk about the Minoan Empire, is it an empire, is it civilization, is it a people, is it an identity? But these are the Minoans. Um, the Minoans, Minoans themselves were great seafarers. They were, they were loved and respected by the Egyptians. So the Egyptians ain't going to invade them. Um, and this is, this is a civilization like the Etruscans that Anne knows full well, I love very dearly. Uh, you will know that um, the Etruscans are a, a peace-loving people. Uh, they don't, um, the Minoans, like the Etruscans, didn't have much in the way of an army. They didn't need one because this is a seafaring race. Um, the Etruscans are slightly different. They're, they're, um, they're not really threatened by many people um, until the Romans. But anyway, they're, they're, there's the link. So what you're talking about is that Santorini there, and when that goes up, it should affect the whole of the Mediterranean Sea, but it doesn't. It affects, this is what, this is the chain of events, right? So let me, let me get my little, um, let, what am I missing, Del? My little annotation bar, bar well done. Yeah, um, no what's that, Del? There's no arrows, no red arrows. All right, all right, all right, all right, bloody child. Um, we're going to put some red arrows in there. Um, so what's happening is that when the, when the, when the volcano goes up, the winds go in this direction. Okay, they, they go in this direction. The winds blow everything um, eastwards. So what happens is the wind blows everything eastwards. Um, um, all the, this is a wonderful word, all the tephra. The tephra is a nice word. Instead of using pumice and ash and pyroclastic flows and all the rest of it, tephra is everything that comes from a volcano, all the crap that goes up, right? So what's happening is all, you have this huge eruption uh, probably more than one eruption in the course of a day, a massive eruption, right? And, and that eruption's heard throughout the planet, Australia, everywhere. I'm going to say that, right? Uh, because it, if you can hear um, Cracker Tower going up in London, you can surely hear this, uh, this if, as it's four times bigger. So anyway, the point is, is that the winds go uh, in an easterly direction and then it blankets the earth in the north, northern hemisphere, right? Where, with a blanket of dust, and eventually that comes into America, goes all the way up across the Pacific, passing the Chinese, it buggers up the Chinese um, civilization at that stage, goes into North America, probably bugging up, buggering up the North Americans as well, and all the way back across the, the Mediterranean, back to this locality. It's said for five years, um, the, the sun was blotted out in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, it'd be like living in um, Greenland um, for five years without being able to see the sea, sun. That's what we're talking about. And why does this affect Britain? Well, um, I will say it, and I've always thought this, I believe that um, most of North Wales is an ugly, um, ignorant, um, and mid Wales, empty, barren landscape with nothing but uh, mosses, grasses, and um, uh, ferns, and all the rest of it across it. No trees, it's barren. I hate barren, I hate the landscape. Except when I get to trees, I love the landscape of Wales. Um, that, that event causing our landscape in Wales, when you go to Brecon, when you go to Snowdonia, uh, when you go to the Preseli range, when you go all that type of landscape, the Black Mountains, all that was created due to this event. Um, because up until that stage, it, we had a heavily farmed landscape in those upland areas. After the people had removed the trees, after the people had used it for agriculture. And the other point as well is, if you look in lots of these upland areas, like, for example, Cumbria, I used, I used to go with my little boy Reuben in Cumbria and we used to um, go up to the upland areas and there was nothing other than sheep and standing stones. It was bereft of life, absolutely nothing up there. You know, whole scar fell, all those types of landscapes in Cumbria, absolutely bereft of trees. And, and it was all caused to this event. People abandoned those upland areas. They, it was too cold. They were unable to use them anymore. This is why this event is so important to, to humanity and understanding what's going on. I, I'm, I don't think I'm overdoing it and I don't think I'm overstating it either. Sometimes you look at events in history and you say that's important, you know. Other times you don't see it's that important. 
So um, what we're looking at here is, is the ash falling, not the dust going into the sky, right? So um, blotting out the northern sky. Um, so, so this itself, um, as, as you're looking um, at this uh, here, um, in German, um, the ash fall from the Minoan eruption um, measured in centimeters, right? So what we've got is that um, there, there is our, um, there's our thera. So what we're talking about, the, 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 ash, the ash itself and what's being spewed out from the volcano is falling on the ground up to 20 centimeters in depth. Now, give you an idea what 20 centimeters in depth is. If you've got, if you've got a standard roof, um, you could have a, you could have a ton of debris on your roof in no time at all, right? And your roof's going to collapse. This is the effect of 20 centimeters of crap on your roof, right? That's what we're talking about. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, and then what we then have is that the ash itself is then layering, laying a thin layer of ash across the landscapes into all across Turkey, Black Sea, Egypt. Um, it destroyed crops in Egypt. It destroyed, destroyed crops in the Middle East. This is, this is a Euphrates, um, um, Tigris moment. This is, this is, this is the destruction of, of landscapes, civilization. This, this is, this is day zero event. Uh, th this, this is so important, this event. And what we're actually seeing as well in the Holy Land over here, um, the, the later tidal wave, the tidal wave itself, that we'll see the archaeological evidence from Crete from a site known as Palacastro. We see a tidal wave heading inland up to 10 meters in height by the time it gets to the coast of the Holy Land, uh, destroying and burying settlements forever. Now, I've mentioned that the event now since 2006, um, the eruption of, of Thera, um, is believed to have been four times greater than we ever estimated it to be. Therefore, all other estimates are out. The tidal wave that landed on uh, landed at Paracastro, which is um, which is um, on the east of Zakros, um, and there is um, Nosos. Um, the tidal wave hitting Paracastro was uh, between twenty and forty meters in height. And I don't think any of us have got any idea how, how tall that tidal wave is. It destroyed everything in its path, burying a whole town forever. These were the events. These were the events which would change humanity in the eastern part of the um, Mediterranean. Now, somebody then asked me, he said, well, um, he said on Monday, he said, what would have happened if the wind had blown in the opposite direction? And I said, right, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. What if it would have blown into a southerly direction, right? Well, the answer is um, ancient Egypt, there would, the ancient Egypt would have been finished. There would be no King Tut, there would be no Akhenaten, there'd be none of the Ramesses, there'd be no Seti, there would be no Cleopatra, there'd be no, no nobody. No, there, any of those people in history after 1645 BC wouldn't have existed. Civilization would have been completely different everything would have changed. However, uh, the other blame for the end of the um, Minoan civilization, which I don't, don't really get or, or believe, um, is the Mycenaeans. And there is, um, if the wind had blown in this direction, the result would have been um, and Nosos would have, uh, would have ceased to exist. Um, all the rest of the civilization in the Minoan world would have been wiped out in Crete. So yeah, we would be talking about a near annihilation of the Minoan civilization. All those people would have left, um, who would have left Akrotiri would have ended up heading towards Nosos, only being wiped out in a huge tidal wave, right? Um, if that had happened, there'd be no Mycenaean civilization there would have been no rise in Sparta. There would be no. Uh, there would be no Alexander the Great. There would be no ancient Greece. Um, in effect, that would have affected Rome. There would be no rise in Rome. Um, the 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 entire and, and there would have been a dust cloud going over Britain, which would have which would have been vast, which would have had an even more excessive effect. In fact, the whole history of Western Europe would have been completely different, and nothing would have been the same. 
Um, and it's, it's, it's also the same. If this event hadn't have happened, um, then the Minoans would have probably um, changed history again, in which way we don't know. Okay, we, we don't really know that. Um, but it's okay to guess. Um, and, and Dell's favorite color is red. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about this wiggle, um, known, as, known as wiggle matching. So this, this site itself is one of the images of Palacastro that we'll do at the end. This is, this is that site on the eastern side of Crete. Now, archaeology now has, uh, has um, a technique called wiggle matching. Actually, it's been around for quite some time, but I had never actually heard of it. But it's coming into its own very much now. So um, the material that we're going to go up, which looks at um, certain trees from North America, uh, the bristlecone pine tree. Um, since 2018, they've been doing using lots of this um, wiggle matching. It's been around since um, at least 1992, but they really stand to use it. And what this is, is getting all the data into a computer and sort of wiggling it around to sort of come into a mean average, sort of really understanding when certain events were happening in history. That's basically wiggle matching. And that's what they're, that's what they're doing now. Um, so the other thing that I'm reminded of when I look at this image is that nobody's ever asked me the following question in all the years I've been doing this. Why are there so many shipwrecks in the Mediterranean perfectly preserved? And do you want the real honest answer of it? Well, if you think of Etna, if you think of Vesuvius, if you think of um, Thera, if you think about all the other volcanoes in the Mediterranean, all you need is huge, huge tremors that causing huge tidal waves. In, it, in its wake, uh, that would have completely submerged many vessels in the Mediterranean. I believe if you look at it logically, the reason why we've got so many well-preserved vessels in the Mediterranean is probably due to the, um, um, the activity um, associated with the volcanoes that we see dominate in the Mediterranean. That is one idea, but we've seemingly got a lot. Look at the Kyrenian ship vessel excavated off the um, northern Cyprus, Cyprus coast. A perfect ship with a completely intact cargo of copper on board. Why? It's just off the coast of, why, why has it gone down? We have, whole st we have whole vessels in the Mediterranean, the very calm Mediterranean Sea, right? Into the Aegean, we have whole vessels full of statues just going down, just like that. Oh, was it because they built their vessels in a strange way that, that, that um, there was always leaks in them? The fact of the matter is, these events, if we really start to understand the time size, if we really start to look at the ice cores, we can really understand what's going on. Why so many different things are happening in the Mediterranean. And this is actually looking at the wonderful archaeological evidence that has been found at Akrotiri. And before Pat shouts out and says, well, I went to Cyprus a few years ago, I went to Akrotiri. No, Pat, it's not the, it's not the Akrotiri on Cyprus. Even though there's archaeological remains at Akrotiri in Cyprus, this is the Akrotiri at Santorini. There's two of them. Now look at this artwork. And you know what is what I'm actually in love with, right? Um, I'm actually in love with that. And what that is, is evidence of the first floor or in or to Pat because she's a yank, the second floor. Um, so, and the thing is, look at all this artwork. This is actually so... Um, this, this, is, this is so minimal, but it's so exqui exquisite. Uh, there's um, animals, there's some birds flying in the sky, but it's, it's not the type of thing that you see anywhere else. It's, this is typical Minoan. And this is the type of stuff they're putting on their pottery. There's different, there's different um, waves of Minoan pottery. Uh, minimalistic, um, animalistic, there's various different phases, ritualistic forms as well. But the Minoans, all these sort of forms of art sort of go, go, go into the future, go into those um, other civilizations that are after them, like, like the Mycenaeans. The Mycenaeans use these potters. Um, and this is actually at the site of Akrotiri. Do you know, do you know what? I, I, I said this earlier on and I thought it was absolutely black. It was absolute blasphemy. Do you know what I said? I said, I said, if an, if an alien came down, oh, Dell, ask me, right? You're an alien, right? What would I like, what would I want um, to stop the aliens from zapping 
Pompeii or um, Akrotiri? Go on, Dell, ask me. Dell's not even there. Right, okay then. I'll answer the question. <laughs> you want me to destroy Akrotiri? Do you all keep it? Sorry, I had to go. I had to sort something out. Sorry. Don't worry. What? Which one should I keep? Akrotiri or Pompeii? Akrotiri. Yes. And the answer is quite simple. Pompeii. Right. You've got Heracleanium. That's a start. So, um, you know, but you only have one unique Akrotiri. The, the, only, the, the other reason why, right, if Pompeii hadn't been found, right, we would still know most of what we know about the Roman world anyway, right? Uh, if Pompeii hadn't been found, we'd, we'd know... Um, we, we, we would know about the Roman emperors, we would know about prostitution, brothels, gladiators, uh, we would know about slaves, we'd know about horses. Um, if, if Pompeii hadn't been excavated, we would have known most of what we do know anyway. Since Akrotiri being excavated since 1967, um, we have learned, we have learned gazillions. We have learned more about the Minoan world, the eruption of theory than we could have ever dreamt of. This is why Akrotiri is more important than Pompeii and is better preserved and it's a trillion percent better loved than Pompeii. The Greeks, even though with their financial problems, in the past few years have actually built, built this wonderful, um, re-roofed it, put these wonderful columns in there, put these nice little support columns in there, put this new level in there, right? The Greeks love this site. I know it's not as big as Pompeii, but if Pompeii was found in China, it would have a huge aircraft hangar over it. And don't say it's not possible. Of course it bloody is. We can, we can build something like the Millennium Dome. We can certainly build a roof over Pompeii. But this site itself is so wonderful. It, it, it's, so, it's so there. It's so in the moment. And what is in the moment is that um, send that guy over to that, send that guy over to that, that wall and just tell him to touch it, right? And that man would be touching a wall that was last touched by the people who lived here when somebody said, we have got to go now, today, this minute, right? And they did. They listened to their people and they left Akrotiri forever. Now, now the thing is about Akrotiri, it's very different from Pompeii. And why is it different? Oh, forget Pompeii, it's gone. Uh, why, is, why is Akrotiri different from Heraclanium? Um, Heracleanium had lava flows flowing through the streets. Um, no lava flowed through the streets of Aquatarium. Why? Because it was already under meters of ash and pumice before uh, the, the, the flows of um, the pyrocrastic flows came out and then the lava came out. But it was well before that. So it meant that you can actually find first to uh, first floor buildings and evidence of second floor buildings still surviving. And I tell you what, right, that gives me an orgasm in front of us, those steps. The reason why that gives me an orgasm is because those steps themselves are a sign of technology. Steps are a sign of civilization. Steps are getting to the next level. Steps are storage. Steps are innovation. Steps are support. Steps are um, technology to be able to build steps. Um, we don't see steps in Iron, in Iron Age roundhouses in, in, South, in South Wales, right? Um, we, don't see, we don't see steps as an innovation in the Iron Age for, for, for a long time. This is a Bronze Age civilization that not only has steps, also has a, a great fleet of ships, is also a civilization that has writing. Linear A, linear B. Mark this spot. And they have beautiful art and pottery. You know, it can't be doubted. And actually, Anne... Uh, you got it. You better start researching for the next lec um, lecture on the forum in three weeks' time. You're doing a lecture on the art of the Minoan civilization. Thanks for that offer, and we'll take it up. Um, so be busy. she's going to be busy. Yeah, all she needs is about twenty slides um, and some good images of women, but but no women holding big jugs. Um, so dating the ancient Minoan eruption of Thera using tree rings. Now, Anne, you've heard of tree rings. You've heard of den you've um, you've heard of dendrochronology, uh, and you've heard of radiocarbon uh, dating, Henry. But what they've done is they've they've developed a new technique in 2018. Um, the University of Arizona 
Um, and the University of Arizona um, has a new technique to not only know the dates of the tree rings, but to also have radiocarbon dates of those tree rings. Now, what do I mean by that? Right, okay. So what this basically is, what this is, we have a living um, bristlecone pine tree that can live thousands of years. So we've got um, tree rings going back 1,500 years. We've got the remains of a tree that was felled um, 1,300 years ago. So we take those rings, they overlap by 200 years, and that takes us back another 1,500 years. And then we go back and we go back. We can take this back to probably 12,000, <laughs> 12 to 14,000 years in regards to the pr bristle cone prime, um, pine tree archaeological evidence that we've actually got. Um, that's important because it gives us dating. It also, it's also important that at the time that the Thera erupted, we have very narrow rings. Meaning that, um, meaning that there was very um, little rainfall and sun um, at the certain times of year that it needed it. So that's detectable in the bristle cone pines. But that's in, that's in good old Yankee Confederate America. Why would that be of in, in, importance? I told you that that dust cloud went around the planet. Right? It affected the northern hemisphere. So the good old Yanks were affected in that <coughs> one. But also the Yanks came in later on, as they always seem to. Um, so when when we when we think why and then we put in the radiocarbon dating and the radiocarbon dating is um what what they would traditionally do is get a bit of wood they, they would take a sample off that wood and they'd get a radiocarbon date that would be plus or minus 50 years or something right but as if you're taking if you're taking um if if you're gaining um evidence from a tree ring uh, which grew over a period of time um then you, you're going to start to think well that's going to be quite contaminated by uh because you know that tree rings not from a certain date it, it could it could be from a variety of different dates all those different things so what they're doing now um is that they're looking at a ring which they know is from uh 1500 years ago and then they're radiocarbon dating that ring. And then the radiocarbon date would come out as like um, 1,450 years ago. And they would say, actually, that means that there's a specific fault with the radiocarbon dating. We know it's 50 years in or out. So every date we take from radiocarbon dating in association with those samples, we add 50 years, which is also known as a wiggle. You can wiggle that one as well. So what this is, is about these tree rings, about all the evidence that we're talking about wiggling around. It's about trying, um, trying and tying together a timeline of ancient Greece, Egypt, Turkey, the world, basically. China, let's chuck it in there. Um, because up until very recently, what they were doing, they were looking at radiocarbon dates, which would give you, a, say, a date of 1,500 years, years BC when Thera went up. And blow me, you'd find the ice cores, which would be read like a book, showing that um, Thera went up 1,645 years ago, uh, which, which is, a, which is, which is a, a quite a difference in, in terms of age. You're talking about 95 years difference, okay? Um, no, 85 years difference. So you're thinking, right, um, is the radiocarbon date accurate or the ice cores diff accurate? And then you've got to work out all the other factors. This is why we've got to wiggle it together. Um, so there's, there's our um, Arizona archaeologist Charlotte uh, per person. Uh, and, and then what we, what we need to look at is this site itself was buried under 40 meters of ash uh, at the site of Santorini. But again, we're looking at these samples in America, um, the dendrochronology in America, and all this ties in with what we're trying to learn. Um, there is one downside with dendrochronology, right? You can't take an, a, an oak tree um, core um, dendrochronology sample and compare it with an elm tree or an ash tree or a pine tree because each of these species has different absorbency rates and different um, obtaining of, of the sun and so on. So, um, so what, 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 they, what they do, you can only date samples like for like. So you can only compare to get 
dates, uh, dates um, oak tree to oak tree, the same species, or um, yew tree to yew tree, right? You can't compare rings with one yew tree to an oak tree to try and work out that same date. It don't work out like that. Um, so this, this is, and what they have done, they've said, right, okay, what's Carl on about this, this disaster that occurred over Britain, right? You know, wh why, why, why would this event um, destroy our upland um, areas? So then what they thought, they said, right, we've got the evidence of the bristle cones in America. We know it's affected America, but we don't have any bristle cone pines in, in Ireland. So what, we, what the next best thing is to go for something um, that is equally affected by cold conditions, and that is the Irish oak. The good thing about Irish oak, there's lots of samples out there. There's lots of old oak trees. You know, some Irish oaks are 1,500, 1,700 years old. So then you look at the bog oak samples, you cross calibrate, cross match, and you can take it all the way back. And guess what we're getting? Around this time, we've got um, really tight growth rings on the trees, indicating everything that we're saying. The, the science is coming out. So what we need is the archaeologist writing here. She's saying, um, if you can um, precisely date um, those moments, um, if you could precisely date those moments, um, you can, the, the, that date itself could date any archaeological site. It's a precise marker in time, date any archaeological site. We're no longer reliant upon pottery um, to sort of help us date sites. You can have a precise date on a period in time. The interactions in that period of time the wiggles that you need to put together to understand those interactions in time. Uh, years and years ago, um, Flinders Petrie, about 140 odd years ago, 130 years ago actually, when he, when he was in um, Egypt um, um, and the Holy Land and the Arabian Peninsula, he was actually finding burials. And he would be digging through the sand, right? Sifting through the sand. Um, and he would come across, um, burials. So we'd come across one burial here, one burial there, another burial over here, and he would say, well, that burial's slightly below this level, and that one's up here, and that one's up there, but they're all the same. And he thought, I've got a problem. So he, he brought together a new technique. So he said, the one, the, the one, the site, a burial A, because there's no, uh, because there's no, um, because there's no painting, um, typical um, pottery um, from um, the Aegean because there's no painting on it and because there's no handles this is a basic type of pottery so we'd look at grave two and the one in grave two um, didn't have any painting but it had handles on the pottery so he thought right grave two is more advanced than grave one so grave one is the earliest and grave three grave C um, he would say well the pottery not only has um, handles but it also has painting telling us that uh, a b c so c is closer to us in time than a so that that was the technique um, that was actually devised which which is a rather um, a rather interesting way of doing things unfortunately it's not a datable way of doing things it's not an absolute measurement of the past there's been a huge, huge debate um, about the timing of, of the theory eruption and radiocarbon versus um, archaeological dating. So the radiocarbon uh, has been all over the place, but the tree rings are really helping us understand what's going on. So some of these great bristlecone pines, another one, and this is one of our Irish oaks. Now the fascinating thing with these Irish oaks is that Again, they are time capsules. I don't know if the, there was a children's film on not so long ago where, um, where these little maggot type things went into the tree with, with woodworms and stuff. And the, and the head woodworm said, he said, well, this tree is a time capsule. It's got all the memories and stuff. And you're thinking, they're talking about a bristlecone pine on an Irish um, oak tree, aren't they? And you're thinking, actually, some of these children programs have got something in them to teach children. Um, I think that's I think that's Walt Disney and um, and Warner Brothers are actually trying to do now. So these sort of these rings themselves really um, fix the events in the Mediterranean for us. They're, they're basically capsules, time capsules of knowledge that we can hope to learn from if we only gave them more time of day. So 
this is a this is a rather interesting image um, and we will take a break after this so this image itself is um, from Santorini um, this is that um, site on Santorini called Aquatiri now this is a this is a rather um, interesting set uh, of archaeology and why is it interesting well Del let's go to Kaya went so me and Del goes to Kaya went we look at the walls of Kaya went and Del says what's this room for so shop Del how do you know that says it on my notes Del and you think that's that's not that's not really helpful to Del is it right but Akateri, Akateri, the site that they've excavated at Akateri, they put a roof over it. They've excavated it. And you could tell that this was a storage building because there's pottery still in it. And you don't, you know, it, it's, it's there. You know, it, it, um, so you look at another room and there's wonderful paintings on the wall and there's a little couch in the corner. Well, that's not a storage room or a shop, is it? it it's, it's accommodation, you know? So what they've done at Akateri, they've left a lot of the archaeology in situ so people can say, wow, I know what was going on in this room. So what I'm going to do, Del and um, Henri, um, Del, are there any questions at this stage? No, it's fascinating. It is, isn't it, this one? It's really yeah. is. Um, um, and Henri, anything you'd like to say? No, I'm really enjoying this because I've been to Knossos and it was so hot <laughs> that you yeah. couldn't learn anything and I'm learning a lot more here than uh, I did actually making the visit and, and I really appreciate you saying that and, and the problem is um, do you know okay okay say it was a better day at Nosos and they allowed you to wander around I think you would have learned more by wandering around than you would actually with a guide because um, when you're with a guide sometimes it's like you've got to remember everything and you don't remember anything um, and uh, that's a shame, really, that you didn't actually get to um, learn much there. But I'm, I'm pleased I've been helping out today. Um, thank you for that. And uh, what we're going to do um, is we're going to um, stop the screen sharing. Um, and I know Anne wants to tell us about... Um, sorry, Anne, about the jokes about the washing machine, the washer room that we've seen earlier on. Um, so um, the washing room. So what we're going to do is, Anne, is there anything you'd like to say at this stage? Right, I've unmuted her, and I'm going to unmute uh, Billis. Oh. Anne, anything you'd like to say? Oh, you've never, you've never say, been there, yes, have you? The art, the, you know, the wall is absolutely mm. beautiful. Mm. It's so delicate and, um, sens you know, sensitively painted. It is. Um, that, you can, know, can, I just... Can, can you, Anne, can you just stop there now? If you were describing art from the um, period of Arcanatum, um, all those words you would be saying about the art then, be simply because we do believe that lots of Minoan artists are going um, into Egypt um, after, after as part of the Minoan world um, and sort of that new kingdom in Egypt. Um, and everything that you've said can be said about the art um, from ancient um, Egypt. Um, and there you go, Anne, just for you. You got that? No, <laughs> not yet. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, you can see that um, they're using the sort of design, kind of designs of plants, you know, that that's very much, they've taken that into Egyptian art, haven't they? Yeah, that, that, you see my point. The Minoans yeah. didn't ever go, they stayed with us, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So okay, okay then. Um, uh, Patricia. Mm -hmm. uh, Patricia <clears throat> Deville. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. And what about you, Billis? Um. Yeah. I will have what I hope will be a very interesting comment right at the end, Carl. When you ask for questions. Okay. No, no, right. that's fine. We'll leave that there. Don't forget it, Bill. I won't, as long as you don't. Yeah. So I've got, to, I've got to ask you to ask me a question. No, just when you come to the any question session towards the end. Okay, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll take about, I'd like to say next week we're doing a battle of Taunton, as our, uh, I don't think I've mentioned that. Um, and um, also uh, the usual things. We had a really good lecture last night when we did Edward Floyd. 
I thought that really worked well actually last night. It really did. And they, anyway, that's that's been that was recorded as well. We had a wonderful thing about Selly last week as well. So um, onwards and upwards. I will have a break and I'll see you soon. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you. My thank you. Pleasure. Do, 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 do. Uh, I definitely want to go there. <laughs> I've been there. I just keep thinking I've got to go to Greece, you know, I've got to go. That's and... one of the frescoes. Oh, yes, yes. We, Ooh, we, um, we did have a, a really good uh, lecture on um, the Minoans, um, you know, a like, couple of years, well, a year ago, maybe two years ago. And... Uh, We've had a look at the book as well, you know, the the, the guide book, because <laughs> somebody went there as well. So, um, yeah, it's fantastic. It's just fantastic. But, yeah, the yeah. museum is really impressive. The yeah. artwork is just yeah. unbelievable. Mm. It is well so worth on, a visit. So that's on Santorini or Knossos? That was uh, Knossos. Knossos, yeah. Which one? Which one can you go to? Both of them, or I think you can go to you can go to both, but um, you if you go to Knossos, you need to choose your time of year because it gets exceptionally hot. Oh yeah, I mean, God, we couldn't go when it's hot. You know, we'd have to go like October or you know, but then they probably don't have trips. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I think they have trips all the time. It, yeah. it is very busy, um, and a, if I was going on a trip, I'd go early in the morning. Um, yeah. Because they literally have coaches after coaches just turning oh, up there. So that's really that's going to spoil it, really. I yeah. think. It's, but, it's uh, hard going. Did you, see, but... did you see those pictures of when they opened the um, Parthenon? Was it the Parthenon? Um, in Athens. Yeah. And uh, there was it was fantastic because there was only about five people going in, you know. It was like, oh, what a great time to go sightseeing, you know. It would be, yes. <laughs> oh. Right. I'm going to have to disappear for a moment. Yeah, we do that then. Okay. <laughs> okay, bye. Yeah, we've got it, Pat. Show us your uh, show us your. That must be where the explosion was because oh, everything yeah. blew up from there, and oh, uh, yeah. this is where the town is. My friend, she wasn't too clever. She said, she said "Is that snow up there?" I said, "No, that's houses." <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's one of the ships coming in. I think that's our ship, you know, and we had to take a boat, you know, across to get in. The ship oh, just parked in the middle of this um, caldera, I guess. Caldera. And, and this is inside. Uh, you can see how big these buildings were. You know, how many yeah. stories. It's amazing. Oh. It was very warm in there. Yeah. It was amazing. Uh, here's the streets, you know, and the, the windows. Wow. Uh, this is in 2014. And oh. I forget what that was. Uh, is it for the doorstep or? No, no, that's to do with the, um, they, they revered the bull. Oh, oh yeah. that 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 represent the that represents the bullhorns. Oh, okay, right. It sat on top of something, and yes. look how the steps had gotten broken. You know, in the yeah. Stop on that. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? The way that is. Yeah. yeah. I wish I could make this bigger. I don't know how to. Uh, there's a little there's a little um, circular thing, and um. That you, thing. Yeah, that's ah, it. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Go for it. Mm. Now, where'd my arrows go? Oh, let me move this thing. Gotta find some arrows. Mm. 
Oh, there we are. How did the dog taste on me? Oh, there's how hot I was. <laughs> my friend insisted I have my picture taken. <laughs> this is a bedstead. Oh, that is <laughs> really? that is absolutely amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, and there's a bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is amazing. This is so good. I know. I couldn't believe it. And there's the oh, port. Right. Uh, grinding. Yeah, grinding. Oh, yeah. 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 That'd be great to go there. Oh, this is from the back of a magazine, but it was on the wall somewhere. Oh, yeah. I didn't get a picture of it, but that was from a, a magazine. Mm. And that's a, another, that was on the wall somewhere. We've got but, that. Uh, yeah, we've, yeah, I've got that in the lecture. Yes, that's in the yeah. lecture. And that, that is, that is what, we, we're looking at that as well. We've, yep, we were, yep. Yes. And that's famous too, famous picture, I think, yeah. Very famous. And that's another bit, I think it's, I can uh, see your eye, it's on we can sideways. Only see, like we can only see a fraction of the picture, but never mind. Yeah. No, I can it's see all of it. better. Yeah, look at that, wow. Oh, yeah. Mm. Let's see. Mm. That's some of the buildings outside. Now you can see the layers That's and the, the snow, cracks. Isn't it? And uh, mm. I think that might be from a ship, you know, we were leaving. Oh, this is up, you know. It's what, not, it, it's the quite house is stuck on there. Dark, yeah. isn't it? The rock. The rock. And there was a museum, but it closed. I was so upset that I missed this museum in here, you know, Aww. where I could have seen some of the stuff. So I want to go back. <laughs> I don't oh, know if I ever right. get back. Yeah. But look at how the houses are just all just hanging on this cliff edge. And we're in this yeah. restaurant looking out both directions. You know. They'd be a bit buggered if it went off again, wouldn't it? So do you think do you think <laughs> it rose out? Do you think it rose? Well, I think it just blew out of here. Yeah. Yes. And it blew, the, up, blew out the cold air. Yeah, and the place that we visit is back over this way somewhere, you know, on this part of the island that was left. There it is. I'll, we were up there somewhere, looking out both directions. Oh, that is amazing. And there and we are leaving. The you went with a girlfriend, didn't you? I did, yeah. Amazing. We, we took a trip around the Mediterranean. There we are. That's the end of the day. That was That's my photos awesome. from that day. Yeah. So there we are. Do you know, oh, just, just, think, just think we couldn't do this in a hall, could we? No. <laughs> no. Well, we, yeah. no. I mean, well, thanks you know, to where... Google, I could find them. My son load, uploaded all my photos from 2000 up, you know, onto my computer, and then Google saves them somehow oh. in the in the cloud. But I think I also have them on a memory thing down there, or something I don't know. But uh, mm. amazing. <laughs> oh, I really, I really appreciate it. Computer, I really right? appreciated that. That's really good. And, and next week, you could show us images of that a museum you visited in Canada. Oh, I, I have got I have got a little talk on the um, the well, writing on stone, writing on stone national park, and it was um, where the Crow Indians or the Blackfoot, one or the other, um, still live actually. And they had writing, you know, like art on rocks. Because I was interested in uh, cave art, wasn't I? Yes. But it's outside, it's not in, in caves, it's on, on the rocks, you know. Um, yeah. I so, went to uh, North and South Dakota and they've got um, all sorts of uh, historic places yeah you know, from roundhouses from way back when they re recreated a couple of them yeah uh, i like that and uh then about the indians and then also about the dinosaurs yeah you know, places where they that's had, right the bones, I mean, you know it's 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 the most amazing place for dinosaurs and um they're like yeah the native americans are the only indigenous uh well, they're not in. Well, they are indigenous, but they're not really, are they? They came from somewhere else. Well, they're pretty indigenous. <laughs> pretty indigenous. <laughs> they, 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 long time. <laughs> they, they were there. They they've been there for longer than anybody else. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, well, do you know, serpent mounds. Do you, do you know, know, serpent mounds and all those other things they've been finding in America go way back. You know, before Indians. Oh yeah, I mean those ones. You know, that came over the Vikings and. 
And I will be friends by. Oh, I've forgotten. <laughs> That's the, okay, let's carry on. Um, okay. Do you know some, somebody said the other day? Apparently, they've got a. They've got what is it? They've got to rename the Chicago Redskins um, American football team uh, because it was um, the American natives were actually, said it was racist yeah. for them to. And I just thought, actually, the ones who should be really pissed off is them. They've been displaced by everyone. Yeah, yeah. that's true. You know, if anyone's got a gripe, it's them. Right. Yeah. Talking about be having a gripe. Anyway, I really appreciate that. Let's just get back to it. Um, anyway, I really appreciate that part. That was that was really good. Thanks for you for sharing that. Yeah, if you want a copy of, I could email you. Uh, you know, the bathtub and the oh, the the, uh, the, the bathtub is the one. The bedstead. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we could certainly do with a bedstead. Not 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 that not the washing machine. Because <laughs> I Anne went to the washing machine museum in Canada. <laughs> I did see a washing machine. <laughs> Right, so on that note, um, I'm going to cut everybody's doodahs and um, I, I'm just going to have, um, I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll have Bill keeping me company. I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have the DeVille. Um, she, she can keep me company. Hang on, hang on, I'm going to mute everybody a minute. Hang on, I've got to unmute you now, Pat. Uh, I'll, I'll mute um, Henry because he makes a lot of noise. And I'll mute the Elvis impersonator. Um, and here we go. <coughs> right, so Bill. It's me and you, babe, and 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 Mrs. Deville. Okay. So um, right, so let's let's share the doodah, right? And three. So obviously, okay. After the break, um, it's trying to get back into it. So I think the the main thing is is what we've been saying is that um, it's not just about it's not just about this one group of people. It, it's about the effects of an event. Um, on a lot more than just a group of people. You could easily get people saying, you know, oh, so what? It's just the Minoans. They're not really that important. Um, but, but then you can actually say, actually, this event affected, you know, lots of areas on the planet. Um, you know, I think the only continent it didn't affect was Australasia, and that was it. You know, it's affecting everything else. So mo moving, moving nicely on, um, and if we sort of get in there, and the map, 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 uh, the map of the Minoan world, it doesn't look like a massive empire. But back then, when I use the word empire, civilization, influence, all, all those types of things come into play. Um, and I think it's a, a, a cultural thing of, um, you know, say, for example, today, today we see the Americans as Coca-Cola and... Um, petrol and whatever the else the Americans are giving us. Um, the Minoans, you can look at, um, say, for example, the, their ability to sail, um, their their sense of trade, their, their their pottery, their building. You know that that's the sort of cultural um, heritage that we're talking about, and their influence is quite wide ranging um, around this part of the Mediterranean Sea. Um, and obviously, those images that Pat we've just seen from Pat, um, do you know just just having the great intercourse with the buildings that you see and wandering in amongst those buildings um, and actually um, really understanding what you're looking at. The, the things that have, have in essence, um, the, the, only, the only things different from what you're seeing now and probably what you'd be seeing back in the day um, on a sort of blinking level is obviously the doors would be there, the windows would be there. Um, the, the, the buildings would be a bit taller if we're looking at them to a second floor, but obviously the, these supports to keep the buildings up and obviously these pillars. But other than that, you can get a pretty good experience. You, you can't really get this level of experience when you're talking about um, a Roman site, for example. Um, back to that analogy earlier on, you're getting a lot of interpretation, whether that's right or wrong, but you can't not argue that these were um, first story buildings because there's the evidence. You can't argue that they didn't have steps because they've got steps. You know, there's lots of things that you can actually say. Um, and and <laughs> Pat's actually added to some, some more of the Richmond's beds and baths um, and more of the steps and, and the grinding stones. So all this has been really, really useful. Uh, but this is a site that's naturally been abandoned. 
um, in, in a moment, and that moment is the eruption of Thera. So um, the image that I've actually got behind me um, being, being the eruption of uh, this wonderful um, uh, Mount um, Thera, the point I was going to make was that if you sort of look at, uh, if, you, if you draw a little red line there and you start to think, right, that gives us another um, load of, another load of islands, ar islands around. And as, as um, the likes of um, the likes of Plato described, you had a central island here. Um, and then what you then had was a series of canals. Um, and then what you had is another set of islands. And then you had another set of canals. And then you had another island. And this is basically what Plato was describing. I'm not saying the temple was directly on top, but I'm saying if you've got a temple by here, it's going to be around one of the vents and it's going to be quite, it's going to be quite strange. It's going to seem that you're in a place where the gods are, uh, which, which sets it aside from any other monuments and alongside the likes of Delphi. This is what Pat was showing earlier on a few moments ago. Um, and the point really to be said about this, um, if I can zoom in a bit more, was the point I just made with that, with that then, is that Plato was describing, yet again, um, a central island with a temple, a canal, uh, another um, concentric set of, I a, a, well, not an island, sort of a ring of land. Um, and then you've got another canal, another ring of land, an, another set of canals, ring of land, and then eventually you've got the sea again. So this is what Plato is describing. Now this is actually Minoan art art that would be not available to Plato unless he dug into the um, ashes at um, Akrotir, he found the site and reburied it again. So this itself tells you something, this, corrobor this corroborates what um, Plato was actually saying, this, this you know, 1,300, 1,200 years later, this is what Plato's saying and this is what the Minoans felt. So, Let's say it, there's no such thing as the Minoans and there's no such thing as the um, Atlanteans, simply because the Minoans is a name given to the Minoan civilization by Arthur Evans in the 1900s. So the Minoans called themselves something else. Um, and they weren't the Atlanteans, which is, that's a term coined by Plato. So, but this is of the Atlantean left, uh, myth legends that we see written about in history. And then from that moment onwards, uh, we see nothing but Atlantis. But it's good to actually get an idea where this idea of Atlantis actually plays from. The disappearance of this civilization, um, lost through um, fire and lost through tidal waves and all those other things that simply go bump in the night. And Pat, if you're ever doing one of these again, if you can look at my screen, it's that sort of arrow there, that circular oh, right. thing. Okay. There, there you go, and there you go, right? I'll obviously get it on full screen as I've done. So, Pat, when you do a lecture on the Mediterranean in four weeks' time, thanks for volunteering, <laughs> you know what to do. Um, do you know, I'm, I'm good at getting people to do things in these lectures. P P uh, Bill always volunteers to be the chairperson, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, this again, um, we won't say much more about this. This is what Pat was saying. Um, and I think, I think archaeology has to be a lot more than just a load of, um, loads of bits of rubble in the field. Um, you know, I've heard Pat say this time and time again, oh, it's not another load of ditches and banks and ruins, is it? I'm going to stay in the minibus, you know, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm sure she wouldn't be saying that if it was a load of bits of pottery and uh, loads of floor levels and stuff and a lot more to see. Because before the archaeologists took everything away, you know, lots of places were like um, what's on display at um, um, Akrotiri, but not to this degree, naturally, because this, this is very much unique. So um, back to what I said earlier on, Del, what can you see amongst these ruins? Um, I can only see walls, but Del, what can you see amongst these ruins? Actually, now I know what this building was used for. It's a storeroom. And what are these bits of pottery? The pottery here is a type of pottery 
that dominated the Minoan world, then dominated the influence of the um, people of the East, dominated the people of the um, um, Egypt lands. And also, when you look into it, the, this very same pottery as it's evolved goes into the tables um, and the um, civilization of the Mycenaeans. So when you think about it again, um, you know, the Minoans don't disappear. They, they, they hang on um, and they keep their, their very firm influence. So, um, you know, looking at my notes again, um, the eruption devastated nearby um, settlement of Akrotiri naturally, um, entombed by the various layers of um, ash, then pumice, um, then all the tephra that has actually come from the volcano itself. Um, you know, whatever happened to the people, they weren't at the site when this happened. So that must, and the other thing as well is this site wasn't abandoned years before um, the explosion at Thera, it happened um, a day or so before. This is when the site was abandoned. So 20 meters is quite a lot really. Um, no, I said 40 meters, didn't I? That's quite a lot of, of material to actually hide this site. Um, and hence why it's been so perfectly um, found well preserved. So um, the early hypothesis proposed that um, not only do we see the disappearance of these sites, um, that the that not only with Crete, not only with the likes of Santorini um, and Lesbos and the likes of Rhodes and so on, and even Cyprus, you're not just talking about the fail failure of crops um, and all those doings. What you're actually talking about is um, the catastrophic effect that the ash is having on burying the rich land. And then eventually we look at the archaeological evidence um, from the wonderful um, um, site of Palacastro. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned this, you know, I'm talking about influences in different areas of the world. Have I mentioned about the Chinese records yet? No. no? Well, this is an interesting <coughs> one. Now, now I'm going to read this out as it is, right? and then you, can, then you can hear what I've said, and then you can see if you wiggle the dates, it puts it in line with the eruption of Thera. Chinese records. A volcanic winter several volcanic winters from an eruption in the late 1600 um, years BCE. So what you're doing is, is the dates are going backwards. So, um, so the late 1600 years BC, so it's not going to be 1690, it's going to be more like 1618 BC, has been claimed by some researchers to correlate with entries in later Chinese records documenting the collapse of the semen legendary Yang um, dynasty in China. According to the bamboo annals, the collapse of the dynasty and the rise of the Yang um, dynasty, approximately uh, dated to 1,618 years BCE. Now, if that's right, then if you work out the difference between 1,645 and 1,018, if you wiggle that and look at all the evidence, this is the same event they're describing. Uh, we're accompanied by yellow fog, um, a dim sun, then three suns, frost in July, famine, and the withering of all five cereals. So in other words, for one complete year, um, Chinese civilization had collapsed. And that's all to this event. So you can't, I couldn't just do the Minoans today because of the impacts of this. I needed to, to look at all the other effects of this. And I needed to put more into a scientific basis and the importance of a key event in history, theory and the eruption. Um, carrying on. Um, I, I think, to be honest with you, Pat, your photographs were pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> but looking, looking, it's a pleasure. Looking into these buildings, and somebody remarked that this looked like a bomb site from the Second World War. And my response was, this looks like nothing like a bomb site from the Second World War because the bomb sites from the Second World War didn't stand up as well as this. Um, mm -hmm. And the other point as well is, somebody, I, I, I remember something from my own childhood actually. No, I wasn't at Atlantis. Don't be silly. Uh, but one thing, one thing that I, one thing I do remember um, was that when I went to Cyprus in 1983, this was only um, this was only eight years after the war uh, with the Turks. Um, and there's a point to be made here. So 
when we went to Nicosia this one day, uh, uh, my dad, who's got little common sense, a bit like me, he went up to the border at Nicosia, went up to the Turkish guards, only to be surrounded by Turkish guards and escorted away from them at gunpoint. Um, at that moment, we jumped into a vehicle, drove to a deserted village, and it looked very like this. A village that had been only abandoned eight years earlier. And the point I'm trying to make is I, I know what a deserted village looks like. That's not a deserted village from eight years ago. That is a village, a town um, that was abandoned over 3,600 years ago. And look how well preserved it is. Look at the render on the outside of the walls. Obviously, as the archaeologists are excavating through what the, what the archaeologists have done, um, as the archaeologists are excavating, um, they're going down and they find, they find that the void itself um, is actually supporting this very heavy wall above. So what the, what the archaeologists are simply doing, they're putting a beam in there to support it. And then as they go down, they're putting another beam in to support it. So in other words, what you're seeing, um, other than the supports, is actually what the archaeologists excavated, which is great. I worked on an archaeological site in um, Spain years ago, um, known as... Um, um, a Santa Maria um, north of Madrid and when we excavated as we excavated there was a conservator in there rebuilding what we're digging it was just like really weird but now I understand that process because you're actually you're actually preserving the archaeology by reconstructing it as you're going along which is exactly what they did at Santoran Santorini which is not what they did at Pompeii what what they've done at Pompeii, they've excavated it all, let, let it free to the elements and let the, the brambles and everything take it over. And one day we're not going to have Pompeii where we're going to have the beautiful remains in China and the beautiful remains at Santorini still standing. Hence why Santorini is much more important than Pompeii to me. And that's from somebody who's written books about the Romans. So um, again, moving on. So you, you can just imagine, let's just, just wonder... Uh, wander down this street. So as we're wandering down this street, uh, you can look up and see these walls. Obviously, that's what's been added today. Um, and these are actually supporting the windows. But other than that, the form is what you're seeing. This is, this is the archaeology. The floor level, what they've done is they've put this floor level in to sort of avoid any subsidence in the walls. So obviously keeping this for a very, very long time for people to actually admire it and admire at it and look at it. Um, in, in many years' time, if, if we're ever at the point that, we, that we've got to start thinking, well, you know, um, we've got to leave the planet or things are just too bad for us to survive. Um, I think the, the, one, the one set of information that we have to keep is this, is, is these events, the, these events that told us, these, these predictive events that can tell us of the effects of climatic change on the on the planet you've eventually got to where why this is so important Clim the, the effects of climatic change um, from a volcanic activity is the same types of effects that human beings can bring to this planet um, and this is why we've got to learn from these these past events um, what what we're seeing associated so if we want to if we want to draw in a little bit of this Right, Dale, Dale loves my drawing. He's going to come to my new art class next week. So if, if, you want to, if you want to look in that, if you want to sort of close in that bit, and this would be sort of something like that. And then what, what Plato is then doing, he, he's saying that what we've got, uh, we've got another ring of islands going around this way, um, in whatever way. Um, and then what we then have um, is that if we go into this, we have the central island where the temple was. Um, we've got his other canal. We've got a concentric set of islands. We've got another um, set of islands. And, you know, there might be something more that we haven't discovered. The water around this landscape hasn't been really discovered. And actually, I found out something else as well. I haven't mentioned the other um, lectures. They have been looking in the basin of that caldera and they've been coming across something known as strobmalatolites. 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 I've said it finally. Strobmalatolites are basically um, an organic coral like organism that, that builds up layers. And what they've done, they, they've examined these organisms and they can date them back to a certain period. That's another piece of evidence that they're using 
to understand when this volcano erupted because those strob mot to lights have started growing in the caldera after the eruption. And isn't that a wonderful piece of evidence, Pat, that they can actually read those layers as well. So when we get wiggle room, we might be able to not only work out the precise year, but we can actually probably work out the month that this volcano erupted. And I'm not going to go any further by saying we're going to work out the exact day, an hour. <laughs> but um, Pat, you never know, do you? Because you, you, you know, when when they originally find um, Akrotiri in um, 1967, they had no idea that they would be able to get a, a close on precise date. They had no idea that that was going to ever happen. Um, and, you know, it, years ago, um, Bill probably remembered me saying this and you, Pat, maybe Anne and whoever. I remember saying, well, you know, the dates that I give you now, now might be slightly different in five years time or this might be slightly different or technology might be slightly different. And I'm right. It always, things always alter in archaeology to give you a better bent of what we're looking at. Um, and that's looking at it from above. And you can just see, um, you can just see if we want to, if we want to build a volcano in there, let's sort of build this thing and chuck it in there and sort of, um, and there, whatever. But what, what the likes of, um, what the likes of Plato is saying, um, now, if, if Plato is correct, then obviously um, the volcano is only in this central area, okay? The volcano is only in the central area. Uh, and therefore, we do have these concentric rings of water around. We can see that from the artwork as well. But you can see where my question is going. And I will leave that one up. If there was no such thing as Atlantis, if this was one conal volcano, you can imagine that not only we're, we're looking at um, um, quite a lot of cubic kilometers of material going up into the atmosphere. It's been estimated that uh, up to four cubic kilometers of material went into the atmosphere that day. If that was a much taller conal um, volcano, you're talking about a greater effect. But let's just not go there on that one. Uh, let's, let's see you examining a bit more yourselves. Um, so what we need to go to, I think we've got some more images of Knossos. Um, one thing when the excavations at Knossos are being undertaken is that... Arthur Evans is building a specific moment in time. Now, um, when Arthur Evans is building a specific, rebuilding, conserving a specific moment in time, my questions have to be and always need to be, are his reconstructions accurate? Now, lots of what we do think about his reconstructions could be said to be accurate based on the later archeological evidence um, from 1967 with Akrotiri. When he is reconstructing, is he reconstructing Knossos 10 years as it looked before the eruption of Thera, 10 years after what it looked like after Thera, um, or is he reconstructing a complete fantasy? That's the question you've got to look at. But lots of what you do see in regards to the art and the reconstruction are obviously based on styles and information that come to us from ancient Egypt, because what we do find with ancient Egypt is lots of the styles of building that we see associated with these builders, undoubtedly some of the craftsmen going to Egypt, are the same things that you see in modern day Egypt today. This is where Arthur Evans may have been given, given some of his information from, and lots of the art itself is actually coming from the pottery that they've been finding at the site, or the frescoes themselves. You know, I've never been to Knossos and um, I know Henry has been there. Um, but the one, thing, the one thing I've got to say, I've said something that may have thrown you. And what there is is quite clear. I, I said that, is this a reconstruction 10 years after the eruption of Thera? But haven't I said that the Knossos site was destroyed? I haven't exactly said that. I said that the Knossos site was, was badly affected in the center of the island of Crete. It wasn't hit by the tidal wave that Palacastro was hit by, which is on the eastern side of the island. Some people say that um, there's evidence that, um, that the, the site was severely damaged and they had to rebuild it. Hence why 
I say that is this a reconstruction of what it looked like after Thera or did it never look like this in the first place? Those are the questions. And I don't think we can answer that. And the reason why we can't answer that is Arthur Evans himself. Because um, as, as Arthur Evans is, um, I gotta be, I gotta be really respectful, but really be, be um, is, is Arthur Evans um, work so fast and so fine and so, in a reconstructive bent that we miss some of the detail, i.e. the same thing that happened with Schliemann. When Schliemann's excavating at Troy, um, Schliemann's excavated at Troy and his initial excavation is really fast. He goes straight through the layers of the Mycenaean Troy, uh, which is part of Homer's Iliad, and he goes deeper on and he says, this is the stuff I'm looking for. When in fact, he's already destroyed the archeological evidence that we need from the Mycenaeans. And equally to be said, could we not have learned more, more at Troy about the Minoan civilization as well? All, these, all this evidence is gone. So really testing and proving the theories of Arthur Evans is very difficult by the reconstruction and the level of work that was done at that time. But I must say that for the tourist board, Nosos is the, is the, is the place and the only place that people talk about and want to go to when they actually go to Crete. And I don't think that's fair, but then again, it is fair in lots of ways. That's probably the reason why um, Henry went there. You put your mic on if you want, Henry. Uh, but there, the one thing, one thing with lots of archaeology, and there's a danger with there's a danger with archaeology per se, um, and it's called um, it, it. It's a form of archaeology that is extremely destructive. When you look, you say, for example, get archaeologists. They say, right, I want to get to the Greek temple. Yeah, but there's a fine Roman temple above with columns still standing. Not interested in that. I want to get to the Greek temple. So you destroy the Roman temple, you get to the Greek temple, then you've lost the context of the Greek temple because you got rid of the Roman temple, right? So um, lots of the information telling us about the Minoans, you know, if the Minoans were wiped out, where are all the Mycenaean buildings? Um, because the Mycenaean buildings would have been built on top of the Minoan buildings, right? The Mycenaean buildings would have had to have been destroyed to get them from the Minoans. Trying to understand what really happened to the Minoans and the Mycenaeans is a really difficult thing to do because the Mycenaean evidence is gone. You see the dichotomy of archaeology, this constant dichotomy. So um, again, looking, looking at this here, we, what, we, what we do have is um, this, obviously everything's going in that direction. It's all going in that, that direction, the wind. Right, so what we get is that dust and, and we get the, that yellow, that description, okay? How do I know that the sky was a yellowy color above Britain and it stopped the crops growing in around 1645 um, BC? Because the bloody Chinese tell us, because they wrote it down, you know? Then we need to prove the date, back to that thing, prove that date, get that date. What we do actually have still in the archeology, span if we sort of um, zoom in on this, um, really really get in there sort of um, um get my mouse in there really get in there sort of really zoom in on this one there we go nice what we can see there is now pumice itself is the type of stuff that you use to um get rid of all that stuff off your feet so pumice is dropping um let's get my little De dell likes my little um things yeah so for dell we'll do it this time in blue blue by dell so um what we got we got pumice being dropped here right there we go Th those are those big chunks of pumice right so that's that stuff um strangely enough um i'm going to ignore it but you've got pumice going in this direction as well oh my god this pumice is not windblown um it's 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 that big bang you know that big nuclear bang actually i gotta say this the explosion at um santorini um, was was many times powerful than Nagasaki and Hiroshima, right? <clears throat> many times powerful. Um, I can't guesstimate, but I'm, we're talking about 100, 100 times more powerful than Nagasaki and Hiroshima, probably more than that. Um, and the point is, is that the, all this material is just tossing everywhere, okay? Um, the tephra is going everywhere. So that's not windblown. So the other point is cause... Uh, these are big chunks of bits of uh, bits of volcano and all the bits and bobs, all the tephra going all the way out. And then what you have 
is the massive bits of volcano itself. There, look how far they're going. Bits of volcano going 130 miles away from the core. These things must have been tossing right way up into the air. And it's quite likely that you, you know, you're going to get more examples because over in Cyprus, the P for pumice and guys, look at that. So 500 miles away, pumice is falling on the coast of the Holy Land. And actually, um, when you think about this, this was a huge explosion. Now, I, I want somebody to tell me I'm wrong. Um, you know when um, the mushroom went up on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, was it the 8th of August, uh, 1945 or somewhere around there? Um, whenever, that, whenever that was occurring... I'm going to write that down to check my date, 8th of August. Um, and 18th, 18th of June, um, the Battle of uh, Waterloo. But anyway, the 8th, the 8th of August, I'll check that one. But whenever that's happening, am I writing saying that, that you don't have big chunks of material being dumped 120 miles away from Nagasaki and Hiroshima? Did anything actually, was anything displaced uh, much further into the atmosphere? Does anyone know anything about vol does anything know know anything about um, nuclear bombs going off? <clears throat> or or is it or is it just a or is it just a mushroom cloud sucking everything into the middle? The point is, the point I'm trying to make is that um, the explosion here was was tremendous on the biggest degree. Some people have actually cited that it was um, volcanic uh, uh, massive volcanoes erupting that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs and not necessarily being hit by a meteor but that's another issue altogether come in on this guys this is why i've left the mic mics on for god's sake you're a scientist um my, my pat you should know some of this well, a, mushroom, a mushroom cloud would have uh, caused a huge vacuum and sucked okay. everything up from the ground so nothing's, all so nothing's going out so nothing's going out Everything's being sucked in, isn't it? Like, like a vac, like you know, on the you yes. know when we yeah when we did the trenches yeah, yeah when we did the trenches, um, uh, uh, the the vacuum was being dragged out and everything was collapsing. So so there's That's nothing right. right. So in other words, am I right in saying would this statement be fair that a volcanic eruption is far greater than anything that we can see with an atom bomb? Yes, definitely. Okay, I, I, okay, fair enough. We got that then. So you can see you can see the mean effect. So. So as we're, as we're coming to the end here, we can see um, Minoan Paris. We're going to go to Pala Castro in a few moments. Um, just a few, few little points to look at. Um, and lucky enough, they're all in my slides. So that'd be good. Um, so again, that there. A um, bit more about um, Nosos itself. Lots of the reconstructions there. Uh, sort of um, inferred evidence from sites um, in Egypt, for example. Uh, you can see lots of the uh, reconstructions. Um, obviously, Nosos is very different from Akrotiri. Akrotiri was buried. Nosos collapsed and mm. fell into disrepair, disrepute, and, and, and was looted and all the rest of it. Mm. Um, so it's a very different effect, like, like the comparison between the atom bombs and the, um, and the um, volcanic eruptions. So this is what you're seeing um, on the island of Santorini today. Um, and... and um, Basically, there's Pat going too near the edge looking for a shop. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I tell you what, don't take Pat near a cliff. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was him. He, uh, look, right, ah. two stupid people. Did you actually see this in the, in the museum? You didn't get to the museum. I, but... I didn't, but I did hear that that was the only thing found of the, value. The, the, wonder, the wonderful golden goat. Um, now, when you think about it, um, this outshines, you know, you don't really find lots of gold at Pompeii either. Um, but there's one thing to be said about gold in Minoan culture. It was, it was, to the, it was very similar to the way the Inca felt about gold. Um, the, the Minoans had lots of gold. Um, and I can remember doing a talk on the palace structure of Knossos, um, where, um, and isn't the other site Gurnia or something? I can't remember. But anyway, there's five main palace sites on, on Crete. 
Um, and I can remember saying that um, even the even the people in the lowest level would have had access to gold, not just those at the upper level. So that's a really important point to make. Now, we're actually at the bee's knees, the site known as Pala Castro. Pala Castro is on the eastern side of the island, and I love this bit of the site. Um, with, with what you can see about um, Pala Castro, is that if we get the little uh, Pala Castro, you can see drainage. Okay, you can see it's got good drainage. Now, this is a site um, that's well before Roman civilization, so they love their drainage. You can see all the individual rooms. The difference with um, the difference with Akateri and Pala Castro is that um, simply what is happening um, is that Pala Castro is buried due to um, due to the tidal wave activities and what am i talking what am i talking about um so to get really really excited if we want to move in there there's our site pala castro well worth a visit and they had they had straight streets um linear linear buildings look at what you're seeing at pala castro has been excavated for some years the difference is with pala castro is not buried under all that material that we see associated with Akateri. Now, this is where the fun begins. Now, for a long time at Pala Castro, the archaeologists and the geologists and the volcanologists couldn't work out why you were getting a layer of about a metre thick across the whole site, even going up the side of the mountain. Why have you got a metre thick all the way across the site? And in this layer, that you see all across this site of Palacrastro. What you see is bits of human bone, mm. which you don't see evidence at um, Aquatiri. You see bits of pottery, the same. Now the point is, the pottery is the same pottery that you find at Aquatiri, right? Animal bones, there you go. Um, you get all the same evidence that you find at Akrotiri, but the difference is at Akrotiri, it's still standing. The evidence here is tossed around. It's an, it's an ejection of archaeology. It's, all, it's like chucking everything into a concrete mix, mixer and turning it around and turning it around. And archaeologists thought, what does this mean? What is this? What does it mean? And the answer came with the Boxing Day tsunami in 2000. Um, 2006. I, I've been saying it's 2006. I hope it is the Boxing Day tsunami. Can you remember? Um, people people were filmed filmed from the apartment blocks, going out um, along to the beaches, collecting fish and all the rest of it. And then suddenly this massive wave comes in at 37 miles per hour. Right. Well, that doesn't help us here, but it does, because what's happening is the people of Palo Castro don't have a, 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 an idea what's coming. They don't have a clue. The reason why you find human remains and everything tossed in there is because something's just about to occur. Now, can we rewind a bit? Um, when I said earlier on, I said about 2006, uh, they started to realize that, um, they started to realize in 2006 that, um, that the eruption at Santorini, um, the Mount Thera was four times larger than they ever thought it had been. Now, if I'd have been doing this lecture back, uh, back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I would have been saying that we've got this evidence at, um, at here. We don't really know what it means, but it may have been hit by a, a great tsunami, a great tidal wave. Uh, th that would be very vague, wouldn't it? Um, and maybe the tidal wave from Thera was 10 meters in height. That's what I may have been saying. Now I can probably say that the tidal wave coming from Thera um, all the way out to this site, which is um, over, over um, probably around 80 miles because it's the other, it's the other end um, from Nosos, is about 80 miles from of Thera. The tidal wave was not 10 meters high, it was probably 40 meters high. Um, which is which would have been astronomical, um, and you're thinking, well, why didn't the people just? Um, I tell you what, we're going to do, right? What we're going to do, we're going to we're going to get everybody to um, 
to run all the way up here, uh, um, away from a tide that's coming 37 miles per hour. We'll go up the hill and we'll keep going to the top and we'll be safe. Unfortunately, tide tsunami waves don't work like that. With the tsunami in 2006, the tsunami kept going. It kept going inland over, over hillocks. It kept going inland. It wasn't as tall as what I'm saying hit Palacastro, but it kept going at that same height. It's likely that anyone who got to the top of this mountain was also killed. And the evidence is in, in, in all that churned up material. Mm. It, in, it, was, it was like putting stuff in a concrete mixer. And, that's ex and when, when, the, um, when the waters receded um, in Indonesia, what did they find? They, find, they found mud, bits of human limbs, animal limbs, food, um, plastic. They found bits of car, all of it tossed in. And the archaeologists in a moment knew what they had been seeing at Palacastro. Exactly the same evidence from the tsunami um, in 2006. They had answered it. This was hit by a tsunami that wiped out the entire population. Nobody lived. That's what destroyed this part of the Minoan civilization. It would have smashed up boats, everything. It would have stopped their ability to have a naval fleet. This is what's leading to the demise of the Minoans. Some people say in my notes, it says in my notes somewhere that the people were unable to feed themselves. Um, they were unable to feed themselves because they were dead. That's what happened to the Minoans. But the Minoan civilization did continue on. That's the point. They continued in their great palaces at Knossos and elsewhere in the, um, in the world of the Minoans. They kept on trading um, with mainland Greece. They kept trading with the North. They kept trading with the Levant. They kept trading with Egypt. And also, if you, if you want to toss this in there, right, this is the Bronze Age. Where did they get their tin from? And there's only, there's only three places in Europe where you can get tin. The most accessible is in Cornwall. Um, so again, looking a little bit more about Palacastro, the wonderful remains there. And what they've done at Palacastro, they've started putting shelters over it. And there we go, the orgasmic steps, the sign of civilization. Um, you know, you may have been with me to the broch of, um, Ma Ma uh, the, uh, I've been with me with Mauser, I've been there, uh, the broch of Gurness. And one thing you're talking about is you're talking about levels where you've got stairs going inside the two walls at the brocks, okay? And you're saying, you know, the, 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 the stairs themselves are, are, are architecturally um, um, a civilized thing, you know, the, these kept the structure up and, and all, the, all the levers and all the rest of it. That, that's you're talking about 2,000 years ago. This is 3,600 3, years ago. So steps are a sign of advanced civilization. If I have used the word empire, what exactly does empire mean anyway? So there's our site. Um, you can see if, I, if I've got my sort of um, distances right, uh, if you're talking about maybe 80 miles and this you're talking about 70 miles, that, that looks about right to me. But this tidal wave was vast and it kept going and it, it probably went over these islands. It kept going and it kept going and it kept going and it was about 10 meters eventually when it got to uh, the Levant. Now, um, we, we, we talk, we're talking about 10 meters um, tall, but then again, that's, that's enough to wreck a whole village. Can you all bear with me a minute? I'm just gonna get a drink and open the door. Look at that plan and I will be back with you. I haven't finished yet. Hello. Bill, have you been to Crete? Bill? Oh, Bill, he's gone. <laughs> Asked if he's been to Crete. <laughs> have you oh, been? To you said this. Have you been to Crete, Anne? No. No. Hey. No, I haven't been anywhere except Italy and ah. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> right, folks, I'm back good. in charge. So, right. Um, you know, whenever I leave, right. You lot just get off. Anne's talking about her love life and terrible things like that. We don't want to know about all that gritty stuff, Anne. We haven't come here to learn about your love life. So anyway, what we're talking about when we look back at Palacastro, we can see this looks like a Roman settlement. You know, you're thinking about a Roman vicus. Come on, Bill, this looks like the Roman vicus at Vindolanda. But no, it's um, over 3,700 years before anything like that. And you're talking about this, this advance. You're talking about they're writing things down. What, one, one, point, one of the other points I haven't made this week is, is the word 
um, history um, and the word prehistory. Now, it used to be said that the Minoan civilization was a prehistoric, um, a prehistoric world um, because, um, uh, because they didn't have iron, Bill. You know mm. what I'm going to say? They didn't have iron, except they had writing. They mm. can't, when history is when you've got writing. Prehistory mm. is when you don't have writing. This is not a prehistoric world. This is a historic world. But it's been before the prehistoric era. So in other words, you know, it, it's, it's that sense of what I'm trying to say that there is no set. There are no set um, parameters for archaeology anymore. Um, they're, 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 you can't really put things into a category. So say, for example, I can't say that Anne's a typical housewife from Bridgend. I can't say that Bill's a typical engineer from my steg. I can't say that Dell's a typical governor from Porth Call. I can't say that because there's no such thing as typical. We've all got different things about our makeup. It's, it's different things about civilizations, technologies, and identification. That's what we're talking about. And you know, Bill keeps going on about, about how did they actually um, cut the stones for the pyramids? Why do you need to have, um, why do you really need to fit in um, the word Bronze Age or Iron Age. There are different ways of looking at things. And maybe we should embrace more of these ideas, Bill. Um, and you are right, Bill. There are so many different ways. So you're looking at a great sort of tephra in front of us. All this stuff falling down. Some of these bits of tephra are, are absolutely huge. Remember, um, you're talking about four, um, four square miles of material being tossed into the atmosphere, having this catastrophic effect um, on these worlds and lands. So the last, the last point I want to make, um, two last points actually, is this, this chart in front of us here. In 1987, studies conducted at the Greenland ice cap revealed a rather precise dating of the Mount Thera eruption, moving it to 1645 BC. Now, there's a few people thinking, well, um, is, is this exactly the case? And what the archaeologists are saying, tree ring dating, um, the Chinese, the Egyptians, the abandonment of the upland areas, radial carbon dating, uh, pottery, all this stuff. And then eventually we will tie it into a specific date. So they're moving between 20 years here and there at this minute, between the ice cores and between um, the volcanology and all the rest of it. And will it, will it not be great that we might be able to eventually settle my fingers and actually start to say, actually, you know, some of the things that happened in the Roman world, you know, some of the disasters that, that occurred to the Western Roman world, could it have been to do with um, a climatic change? Could it have been to do with an eruption of, of, of Etna or could it have been another eruption of Thera, but that's not really indicated. But what I'm trying to say, it, it's trying to work out those, those little layers. There's always layers. There's always information for archeologists to look at. And the final point is, this thing about the, this thing about the Mycenaeans. Um, now, when we look at the, about the Mycenaeans, when you look at the Mycenaeans, it's almost as if, um, if we want to sort of uh, do a little bit of, Del, this is my last artwork today, so enjoy it, Del. So what we're talking about, if we, if we want to look at, um, if we want to look about the Minoans, um, hang on, just sort of look in here. Uh, if we want to look at pre-Etna, pre-Etna, God, I can't get my words out. If we want to look at pre-eruption of theory, we're talking about the Minoan world, sort of something like this and something like that. And when you come into the Mycenaeans, it's almost as if it's the same area of people. It's almost as if um, what happened, the, what happened was that um, this, this side here uh, was decimated and this side was not decimated. Maybe what's simply happening um, is that the Minoans are rebuilding themselves at somewhere like Mycenae and becoming a warlike people. Maybe somebody's going to say I'm completely wrong with this, but the Mycenaean, the, the, the idea of the Mycenaeans 
and, and maybe as part of the Minoan world is still there. If the Mycenaeans were clearly, truly different people, um, what they might be doing is the assimilation of what's left of the Minoan world. The best empires, as Bill will testate, are empires that are locusts. The, Romans is an, the Roman Empire is an empire of locusts. Every single bit of technology that the Romans ever are said to have given us would nicked off another civilization. Um, you know, go through the list. Um, um, suspended baths, the Greeks, uh, their agriculture, the Egyptians, their shipbuilding, the Carthaginians. Maybe the Mycenaeans were like this, but they took the best bits, the Pax Mycenae, Pax Romana. That's just a lot, little bit of an idea to put in there. Maybe the last thing to be said. Um, so here we go. Just, just a summary here, right? Um, it's a bit of a summary. So it has long been believed that the eruption of Mount um, Thera destroyed the Minoan civilization, while recent science reveals that this eruption was even larger than previously believed. It also suggests that Minoan civilization was not quickly destroyed by the eruption. Minoan civilization appeared to have declined somewhat after the eruption of Mount Thera, but remained in places largely intact. Been saying lots of that. Shortly after the eruption of Mount Thera, the Mycenaeans, um, the Mycenaeans are said to come into their own. Um, and whatever's happening in regards to the Mycenaeans, we really need to look at that information, whether they destroyed the palaces um, or um, was the case that they simply assimilated the Minoans into their world. Still, Minoan culture um, remained. Um, and we've got the writing. We've got the sense of who they are. And we've got the sense of their influence down the ages. What we have simply done today is to mix two lectures together, the, 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 um, the decline of the Minoans and the, the, the legacy of the Minoans, and also look at the, the importance of this date, this date 1645 BC. If it does come out to be that date that Thera actually happened, we will be able to recalibrate world history from that moment. Um, and sadly, the date of, of the birth of Jesus Christ pales into insignificance. So what I'd like to do is ask if there's, we'll, we'll just put all the mics on, we'll, we'll cut the screen sharing, and we'll ask if there are any questions. So let's have you all on the board, all on the board, Miss Ford. Um, and what we're going to do, everyone undo their mics, including my lovely Dell. Do you know what? I, I, I do like Dell. He's, he's like a, he's got a nice little personality about him. That's good. <laughs> Um, right, so let's have actually Dell. Come on, Dell. Are you joining me on Saturday, Dell? Uh, what are you doing? We're doing a mix of, mix of a lot of things. Actually, we're doing um, lots of those myths and legends, those those random myths and legends from across yeah, our land. Probably, yes, it will be. And um, we're we're going to chuck in a bit of Highgate as well. Um, for for um, mm. we're going to do a bit of Highgate Cemetery for um, for Amy, and also our ghost walks proper will be coming back in August. Um, for a couple of uh, months, and we'll be doing one right. a month, and then we'll be finishing. We'll probably have about three before Christmas. So, anything Lovely. you'd like to say, Del? Really enjoyed that. I mean, I've seen stuff on TV about it. Um, you know, uh, but that was really, really <laughs> interesting. Thanks. My pleasure. My pleasure. And I don't know who was back in then when you were speaking, Del. Um, um, <laughs> right, Peter. Um, uh, you you talk, Bill, petrol man. Me? Okay. Um, I just want to comment on something you referred to earlier, Carl, and that was the fact that when Arthur Evans was excavating, he could find no sign of any writing and no idea of what this civilization called themselves. Now, a few years ago, less than three actually, I was in Nossos and I wandered off from the crowd and I actually bumped into this local archaeologist um, wearing a badge. I knew he was a. So I, I, I opened the conversation in Greek because I like to practice my Greek as far as I can take it. And then he told me a very interesting tale because I asked the same question 
where did Arthur Evans get this name from? Well, he said, most people don't realize that when he started the dig, obviously he'd have to have all his permits from the government and also the permission of the local landowner and farmer who owned all the site around Nossos. And uh, Arthur Evans knew this farmer quite well. Now, this farmer had uh, a few dogs and his favorite dog was called, guess what? M Minos. No. Minos, yeah. Oh, fuck. So the, sto the story is that Arthur Evans liked yeah. this and he thought, yeah, that's as good as anything else. We, we'll use it. We've now got the <laughs> Minoan. So the Minoans are named after a dog. Oh, <laughs> God. It's, 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 why, 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 why would he lie about that, I wonder? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's I mean, you know, yeah. It's, it's the thing, it's the thing is the uh, Anastasi, the, the, um, um, I, I think it's in local dialect. It's, it, the, the Anast they don't use the word Anastasi in connection with the people of Pablo Benito and, and the Choco Canyon uh, because it basically means, um, I think, evil foreigners or something. And um, they can't call themselves that because they're referring to themselves. It's like in Wales, we call ourselves Welsh when we're actually calling ourselves foreigners. So in other words, lots of these names have come later on and it would be really it might be interesting to understand one day their, their name. And I'm sure that's out there because you've got, um, you, you've got, you've got the Egyptians writing at that time um, and you've got the Minoans writing themselves. Interesting that. Yeah. And what, and is that the question, Bill, you wanted to raise? Go on. Well, that was the one. I raised my question now. The other point of interest is that there are many Palo Castros around Greece because it's the name given to any old fortification they can't identify. Because salt means it's old castle. Oh. You'll see many palacastros around Greece. Right. But the, our palacastro is in the eastern part of the island. I, lo I love that yeah. site. Special one. Special yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, the spe it, it, well, is, I, it is a special one, Bill. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you for that, Bill. Um, go on, and let, let's have you quick. You've got, you've got one sentence, Anne, and it can't be anything to do well, with um, I just home thought, economics. You know, I thought Minoan was from Midas anyway. I, I thought it was from um, or Minos, Minotaur. I don't know. There's a lot of words it could be from. Yeah, but, but um, I, I, I go with the dog. The local, you know, a local uh, interpretation of I go, I, yeah. uh, a more important to, uh, name, you know, the dog was named after Minas, you know, uh, so that's all really, but yeah, very interesting. And um, how do they do I, I washing? Go. <laughs> uh, well, you can go to a washing bill. Um, how, right. do they, how do them in Owens do they washing? Uh, I, I bet, Bill, it, it's the time. Um, we got Bear cubs, <laughs> I, I, Irish, Irish gypsy. What have you got to say now? Um, just, just on Knossos, to bring up your washing um, scenario, actually the site has got extensive um, water channels where they actually brought water to the site from um, great distances. So they had quite a sophisticated oh, water nice. system. And, and, and do, you know, do you know what we, what we need to do? Um, I need to do the Nabataeans in the future as well. Um, water and and last thing, um, last thing, Pat. Well, I was just fascinated because I'd been those places and I, you know it just sort of illuminated it all so well because I only got to spend a day in each place and that was it, you know. Yeah, it's Bill, interesting to see could, the, the end result. Yes, you know, of what what happened. Well, I think, you know, I think they've improved it since I was there. You know, the walkways, the new walkways put through and. And restored yeah. some well. Ex exactly. Yeah. It it it's. It, I gotta be honest. In tribute to the the Greeks, they they've done a pretty good job there. They mm -hmm. they have done a really good job. Um, and say no more about that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close this off today. We're gonna do Townton next week. Um, look forward to seeing you guys either at the forum next week. Um, and I do believe um, um Filthy John's gonna do the one at the forum next week. Um, and. Uh, so I think Bill's chairing it. So obviously next Wednesday evening as well. Uh, looking forward to that as um, also. Uh, next Wednesday we'll be looking at um, inscribed stones. Um, that's 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 going to take us to lot, some lots of new stuff. And, and obviously this Saturday. And look out for YouTube tomorrow as well if anyone's interested. Um, 
at um, at one o'clock tomorrow. And tomorrow we we're gonna YouTube tomorrow. We're just gonna have me talk, and I'm not gonna do the images behind me. We just I'll have a good old chat. You'll be able to see me in full uh, blur, and that's tomorrow YouTube one o'clock. So um, you can you can lust after me. Um, on okay. that on that note, if anyone's got anything else to say, say it now, and I'm gonna we'll close. Thank you and goodbye. Thank, Thank you, Dale. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you, yeah. Bill and uh, Henri yeah. and um, Anne. Take care. Just a quick okay, one, Nicole. Oh, go Bye on. Then. Did you want to sip it to me, did you say? Hang on a minute. He's showing us something. Is that, oh, that is a copper um, ingot. ingot. Yes. Oh. Minoan, actually from the museum in Knossos. Wow. Oh. oh, that is nice. Oh, lovely. Uh, that links in with the Kyrenian sh uh, ship um, wreck and everything else, exactly. Yeah. That sense of trade, yes. So, that's that's cool. Cool. that was yeah, very the, good. The, the other thing I've Thank got you. to mention in the museum in Iraklion, they've got a lot of pottery from this period, and quite a bit of it have got the swastika sign on it. Oh, which yeah. is an ancient, an ancient good luck sign. Yeah. Could, you, could you imagine? Yeah. yeah. Could it's you imagine? Yeah. yeah. What it would have been like for the Germans to have actually seen that in the museums. That's probably where you got it from. <laughs> there we are. The oh, things God. you learn. Things you do learn, exactly. <laughs> okay, actually, then. Can I just say, make one remark about that quickly? One of the things, you know, um, um, when Schliemann, when after, obviously way after Schliemann's excavations, people used to visit Troy. Um, and in the, um, in the signing book at Troy, in the little cafe, you, you get the names of Himmler um, and you get the names of lots of the top Nazi politicians who actually are going there in the 1920s and 1930s. So that could be possible, Bill. Yeah, could be. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, they, they, did, they did take it from the old, like, mythology. Yadinaba. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, guys, I'm gonna say good. I'm gonna say goodbye. So, um, anyway, thanks for that, Anne, Pat, Bill, yeah. and Henry, and I'll see you next week. Thank you very uh, much. Enjoyed uh, that uh, much. Thank uh, you very much, Henry. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See you guys. Did you um, want to see me about little man? Oh, me? Oh, oh no. It, it, yeah, no. My my little boy. I'll, I'll just have a quick word with Anne in a minute. Anyway, Bill, I'll see you. Hi, Bill. I might be in touch. Okay. See you, Bill. Right. You know, when you said little man, right, um, <laughs> Bill, Bill thought you were talking about his uh, manhood. <laughs> um, so, oh, no, just, just, just quickly, I, I spoke to, um, oh, I, hang on a minute, I need to turn the recording off now. Hang on, we don't want this recorded. Hang on a minute. Um,